Stop for our visitors watching us from through Facebook. We bless God for all of our visitors and our members. Sister Barbara's at home, not feeling well. Hey, Sister Barbara, we say hi to all of our mothers, all of our members that are sick, shut in, visitors. Uh, we thank God for you tuning in. We don't apologize for the day. It's just been one of those kind of parties. Amen. And we thank God for his great. I pray you felt something right there through Facebook. This is why you got to be here. It is not enough to just watch us on Facebook. The Spirit of the Lord is most here even now. And uh, it's, it's doing everything in my power to control what we're trying to go. But God is having his way in this place. People are being healed even now. People are being delivered even now. Hands are being raised right now. Hands are being sung right now. The Spirit of the Lord is having his way. So again, we thank God uh, for you watching. Those of you who are visiting, visiting with us, would you please stand? If you're visiting, you're visiting with us, would you please stand? Bless God for you, sir. And sir, and me, I thank you so much for being here with us. Our urge is that we'll give you your hand. If you have a church home, we thank you and honor your man and woman of God for allowing you to visit. If you don't have a church home, we want you to consider joining here where you can grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. One more time, Port Temple, give our Jesus a hand. Thank you so much. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. All right, grab your, grab your Bibles. Let me, uh, with, with such praise, let me try to cut through some of what I need to cut through because I do want to put a word in your spirit. And we thank God while we're doing this for Missionary Montgomery. Missionary Montgomery. That's the Lord calling. <laughs> Amen. We thank God for Missionary Montgomery who taught our Sabbath school on this morning. Come on. Awesome job. And while I'm at it, those of you who missed last week, uh, Evangelist Smith did a great job preaching. It's about to go now. You want to get that Facebook, go through the archives and you can see that, see that message in its entirety. Or if you want it on DVD or CD, uh, see our media ministry and we'll get one of those, one of those to you. All right, so this month, I want to I want to talk about uh, what we're going to call the gift of life. Everybody say gift of life. Gift of life. Come on, say it like you mean what? Gift of life. Now, before I say this, I want to I want to be very clear. I love praising God and all that, but don't you dare get tired on the word. Amen. 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 Touch your name and say you left something for the word, right? You left for the word, right? <laughs> right. Amen. So we, I want to put in your spirit. The gift of life. The gift of life. Um, what is life? What is the purpose of life? Even as we come into this holiday season, what is your perspective on life? How is your life going? Uh, you, 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 you heard me say before, if there's something about your life you don't like, change it. Is your life. Amen. Amen. So this month, uh, we're going to just kind of touch on the periphery of a um, of gift called life. Remind you of what's really important during this holiday season. Amen. Uh, a few, few days ago, uh, my wife and I, we were watching uh, watching the news and we were, I, and I, don't, I don't remember where this House fire was. I don't know if it was local or national. It might have been national. I don't know. But uh, this lady was on there. And, uh, she had lost everything. And uh, put the camera, you know, they always put the camera in your face, but the lock was right at your most this moment of despair. And uh, put the camera in the face. Say, hey, what you going to do now? The lady uh, probably shocked the news camera, didn't shock us. She said, the camera said, uh, you lost everything. You lost your house. You lost this. You lost that. And uh, the lady says, I just thank God for life. Somebody say, life is a gift. Because no matter what else you lose, as long as you got your life, you can fight another day. Come on, touch your name and say, I know that's right. We were, we were little, all of you will remember when we were little, we would play, we'd play a game. Depending on 
how you did it, you know, genie in the bottle or whatever, three wishes. But when we were little, we played. If you, if you could have three wishes, what would you wish for? And remember when we were little, we would, the stuff we would say would just be, be crazy. I, I, I wish for all the money in the world. I, I wish for, you know, at that time, depending on where you grew up, I wish for all the gym shoes in the world. I wish for all of this and all, all of that. That's, that's how we answered that question when we were younger. Uh, when you get older, someone asks you, hey, uh, you got three wishes, what would you wish for? You probably would still wish for all the money in the world. But I guarantee you that second choice would be something concerning life. Life, health, and strength. A, a day without busyness. No headaches. Peace of mind. No back pain. Why is it we uh, answer that question differently when we were younger versus when we get when we get older? It's because when we're when we're younger, we take life for granted, and when you get older. You take life for grace. When we were younger, we, we had no concept of, of life in the context of knowing that you could die at any moment. And when you get older, you start looking at life through that lens, and you start looking at life through that perspective. And what was important 20 years ago Come on, who am I talking to in here? Don't mean a thing now. What you stressed out 15 years ago. Man, you shot your troubles over 15 years later. And I say that because, again, uh, you, you heard me say, if I get to the end of the month and I paid all our bills and I got $5 left in my pocket, that's a shouting month for me. I don't know how you feel about it, but anytime God makes a way and allows things to come where they are, Touch your name, that's a good month for me. I don't know about you. May not have a lot of extras, but I thank God I got through another month. <laughs> Is that all right in here? Come on, somebody say the gift of life. So life is a gift. It's a gift, whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not, whether you appreciate it or not, whether you accept it or receive it in that context. Life is a gift. But drop something in your spirit. Think part of the sermon. But I do want you to understand, you did not have to be here this morning. You didn't have to be here this morning. Somebody last week died your age. Every now and then, when, and I said this before, every now and then when you walk when you get up in the morning and you walk throughout your house or whatever it is, just pause for a moment and just say, thank you, Jesus. Because life is a gift. Turn your Bibles to Genesis chapter 2. Let's we'll start here. We'll start here this morning. Genesis chapter 2. And I want you to go to verse number, verse number seven. You got Genesis chapter two, verse number seven. Say, I got it. His book, Genesis chapter two, verse seven. Verse seven says what? Mm -hmm. Wait for this side to catch up with this side. I don't know how, what road we got on. But. Look, and the Lord God formed man out of what? From where? I would have you touch your neighbor and say, we all dust, but I won't, I won't have you do that this morning. I won't have you do that this morning. And breathe into his what? Mouth. What? The and then what happened? The when when did life begin? When did life begin? 
when God breathed into our nostrils. I don't care what mom and daddy did that night. Nothing could take place if God had not what? Breathed into our nostrils. Minister John, it is from the moment that God breathed into our nostrils that we experienced the gift called life. Ironically, Brother Leroy, it is the moment God takes his breath from us that we lose life. Life began when God breathed into our nostrils, and life ends when God takes the last breath away. I don't care what people say. You cannot die until God says it's time to die. I'm preaching better than y'all say amen. But life, life does not begin with mom and daddy. Life begins when God breathes into our nostrils. And it's from that moment we began life. Because life is a gift. Life begins with God and life ends with God. I'm, I'm so sure of this that God says about himself, he says in Revelation 1 and 8, he says what? What? The what? Says the Lord what? Which is. Which was what? Somebody say God is everywhere. God was there when life began and God will be there when life is over. I don't understand then why it is that if God is there at the beginning and God will be there at the end, why we spend a lifetime trying to run from the one who gave us life? We put so many priorities over the one who gave us life. You cannot live life, experience this gift called life without God. If God did not breathe on us this morning, if God did not start us on our way, If God did not watch over us all night last night, I don't care how fine you are, I don't care how many muscles you got, you cannot be here if God did not do some divine intervention to make life happen for you this morning. Don't you dare think you awakened by your alarm clock. Your alarm clock simply brought you into the consciousness of a God who stayed up all night so you can get up in the morning. Why do you think no fire broke out? It wasn't because your alarm system was so great. It's because all day and all night the angels were watching over you and holding things back and holding pipes together so they wouldn't burst and keeping your front as much as or wouldn't pull up and keeping burgers out and at the same time keeping you sleep enough to get rest and get wide awake enough so you wouldn't die in your sleep. And you woke up this morning and you didn't say thank you, Jesus. Take a moment for these next few seconds and say thank you, God, for the gift called life. It's there in the beginning, and he'll be there in the end, which there's been this clear. The essence of life, then, is what I do in between the two breaths. Brother Bobby, I needed God to give me life to start, give me breath to start life, and uh, I, I die when he takes that, that breath away. So then the question becomes, what do I do in between the two breaths? Well, here's one clue. Psalms 50 says, let everything. <laughs> Y'all making it hard to preach this morning. That has breath. Praise the Lord. 
of life. This is why, this is why, this is why it is foolish for atheists to exist and claim there is no God. That's in scripture too. Psalms 14 and 1 says what? That's a harsh, that's a harsh language for them, but it is necessary because for an atheist to say God doesn't exist is the equivalent of saying to a God who gave them life. God, you gave me life so I could exist. Or they turn around, look you in the face and say, you don't exist. And it's at that moment I wish I was God because I would just take breath. <laughs> From anybody who said it. I ain't real. I, I just snatch breath. Snatch breath right out real quick. Just long enough for him to say. It is no wonder. It is no wonder you, the Bible says that at the name of Jesus, every knee at some point go bow. Because I don't care how sick you are. I don't care what you're going through. There's going to be something in your life that's going to make you say, yes, God is real. Get to a moment in your life you can't breathe. Tell me who you going to call. No, touch your neighbor and say, you need God. You need God. You need God. You need God because life is a gift. It's a gift. It's a gift. Don't take life for granted. It's a gift. Particularly this holiday season. Don't take life for granted. It's a gift. Listen, I, I want to make, make a lot of points, but I want to I drop this one point in your spirit. We don't do anything else. Get, get this one point. Y'all ready? Here it is. You ready? ready. Alright, here it is. You only have what? Did I preach this before? <laughs> Come on, touch me and say, you only have <laughs> one life. <laughs> because you only have one life, live your life to the fullest. few weeks I'm going to work that because some of you just heard, 10% of you heard me say live life in sin. I'm going to show you fullness don't mean in sin, right? Come back to that. Life, you only have one life. You cannot spend your one life stretched out about people, problems, and possessions. Don't let people, possessions, and problems rob you of the one life. with our one life allow people to stress us out allow problems to stress us out allow stuff we don't have to stress us out you will only have one life I wish I would let people and I'm a pastor drive my one life crazy you cannot have every phase of my life a bill for that beauty for all the money cannot have every phase of my life Can't let you can't you can't stress out about people who ain't thinking nothing about you. Some of you say I'm all night, all night, all night talking about folk who get asleep. Some of y'all all week watching folk Facebook. I'm all week 
taking out people social media and they ain't trying to know nothing about you. You don't have to learn that don't let people stretch out the one life you got. Stress you out. Particularly problems you can't do nothing about anyway. Do, do, do you all not know we we could if we wanted to march every weekend on something? Every, you, I mean, you could you could stress every day on something. Light bill, gas bill. It's when, when the gas bill get high, it's get high for all of us. Gas prices go up. Oh, what you gonna do? Can, can, can the gas? I mean, what you gonna do? You can do stress out because the gas is going up. Kick your tire. Kick your car. Get to the gas station. Cut, cut out the clerk because the gas went up. What you gonna? Go there with the same ten dollars you had. I need ten on one. Well, you don't ten on one too much. That's all I got. Put ten on one. When I get out, it's time to park. That's all. I got. <laughs> and then you cannot let you cannot let possessions mess you up. Now, now we're we're a mature church. We've already. Been through all this stuff, so I don't, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it, Brother Joe. But let me just, for 15 seconds, say to our church again don't you dare let Tonka trucks and Barbie dolls and, and toys mess up your holiday season. You, 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 get, you get those kids something, or Santa, depending on, you know, Santa, Santa, get those kids something.
can change your perspective. Yes. So you understand your need. Yes, I'm preaching all by myself. God change your possession. You'll come to the point that you understand as long as I got King Jesus. Who am I talking to? Okay, touch as long as I got Jesus. As long as I, I got Jesus. I, I don't need him because I'm the son. If I got Jesus, I can lose my job. But I can get back up again and get another job. If I got Jesus, I can lose the loved ones. But what would he be a mother to the mother? Won't he be a father? I feel like preaching in here. To the father. Won't he be a friend? That thing is closer than any brother I find today and say, I got King Jesus and I, I don't need nothing else. When did life begin? When does life begin? When does life begin? We got breathe into our nostrils. But God is so awesome. He didn't just breathe in our nostrils and give us life. He sent us to this gift called life with something in mind. Turn to Jeremiah. I'm done. I'm done. Jeremiah. Oh, Lord, have mercy. We go chapter one. I want you to look at verse number, verse number five. Jeremiah chapter one, verse number five. When did life begin? Breathe into our nostrils. But before he breathed in our nostrils, he had a plan for us. Oh, God. Verse 5, you guys say that? Verse 5 says what? Stop. When, when, when does life begin? We breathe into our nostrils. We became the living self. When did God know us? Watch this. Who knew us first? Shift the question a bit. Watch this. Who knows us best? If God knew us before he breathed in our nostrils, did it mean there's nothing in your life that has come your way that God didn't know about? And if God sent something your way that he knew about, it meant God knew you could handle what he sent you. So say, say God knows me. I tell you why you are shout because some of us have taken this gift called life and we have spent more time complaining to God about the life he gave us than celebrating the life he gave us. Before God formed you, or when God formed you, when he formed us, he knew everything about us and hence formed us to deal with whatever was going to come our way. Y'all ought, ought to be shouting about right now. Uh, it's a good revelation for somebody because somebody here hates the color of their skin. But God knew you could handle being dark skin. God knew you could handle being light skin. God knew you could handle coming from the hood. Who am I talking to in here? God knew you could handle walking like this. Somebody else would have lost their mind walking like this. But God knew when he formed you, he made you an extra. 
extra dose of something to be able to walk like this. But people look at you walking like this. God formed you based on what he knew about you. And the problem you have is you allow somebody to come into your life who don't know you better than God and tell you that the call of your sin is ugly. God formed me based on what he knew about me. And if God says I'm good, I'm good. People say, God knows me, God knows me, God knows me. If God thinks my way is all right, I'm all right. If God thinks my man is all right, I'm all right. God for me based on the knowledge you have about me. And you, you're going to let somebody walk in your life who don't know you like God and you base your self-esteem on what they said or what they think the devil is a liar. You better get back to how God created you. And when you get back to how God created you, you begin to understand that everybody who comes after God is in second place. If God loves me and I love me, you can talk to the hand until you learn to love yourself. Let your neighbor say, thank God for life. Thank God for life. There you are. With your dark skin trying to become a liar. There you are, liar. Trying to become a doctor. There you are. With your short hair trying to make it long. There you are. With your long hair trying to be so what he said. We can't use products. Yes. Use products to grow up your glory. For products, what I'm saying, we can take the eyelashes off. We can take the hair off. Just want to be real with you. 
change and my skin change color when the seasons change. My hair goes back, but if I push it forward, I might get a little bit more hairline portion to my proclivity. I have to tell the truth. I like these, so my stomach sits out a little bit more than I like. And now and then, I might put some known stuff in, but I want you to understand, for the course of our dating, I don't intend to wear this. Much fun is what happened. I ain't trying to preach none of that. I'm trying to preach this part right here. I'm done. Jeremiah, one five. Before I formed thee in that building, he said, What? And before thou came as forth, what? It says, What? Beauty is what? <laughs> when, when did life begin? God breathed in our nostrils. <laughs> ah, when did God know us? Who knew us? Who knew us first? Uh, who knows us best? All right, now watch this. And I'm done. Since so I'm done, pack up. Seriously, I'm done. When did God? Give us purpose. Uh, come on, say it now. Preach it here. When did God give us purpose? God gave us purpose before we were born. Which means, Brother Harold, Sister Tamika, you came here. You came here with purpose. Then everybody asks, why did God create me? God created all of us on purpose for a purpose. And God made sure to give us our purpose before we got here so that nobody can talk us out of the purpose he gave to us. If God gave us purpose before we got here, then it means this, Sister Watson. The essence of life has to be finding my purpose. Because I contend to you that when you know your purpose, Live out of your purpose. 
A lot of people here live out of their job. You live from one work day to the next. One paycheck to the next. You don't even have time for the kids. Don't, don't live out of your job. Live out of your what? Purpose. <laughs> now I'm done. I'm done, Mr. John. You say, as I look around the room and you're trying to figure it out, you're trying to say, well, Rick, how did we know? What our purpose is. Well, until God reveals it to you, understand this revelation. God does not waste stuff in your life. God does not waste stuff in your life. Which means everything you've been through has been working for your purpose. Romans 8, 28 says it this way. Maybe you'll drink it this way. And we know that all things work together for good according to his divine purpose. I came this morning to tell somebody that if you don't know what your purpose is, just take a moment and remember what God has already brought you through. And when you think about what God has brought you through, then you begin to understand that God has given me for purpose. Anybody in here that's had a heart problem, God brought you through that for a divine purpose. Anybody in here that's ever had a car accident, God brought you through that for a divine purpose. Touch your neighbor and say, when did he be talking about me? Because of God. So you can look back over your life and see where he brought you from and look at your neighbor in the face and say, neighbor, I once was lost, but now I'm found. And you look at your neighbor in the face and say, neighbor, you can have cancer, but cancer won't kill you because I'm all the hope brought me through cancer. Say, neighbor, I had a heart problem, but my heart problem didn't kill me. So it won't be the 
between now and the time you die, you've got to figure out what your purpose is. You ain't live until you live out of your purpose. Work won't feel like work when you're working out of your purpose. Prosperity will show up in your life when you find your purpose. One of the reasons you struggle coming to church trying to figure this out is because you don't yet know your purpose. This is my prayer this morning that God will drop in your spirit the reason you were created. You were not just created to go to work and have kids. Just lost half the room right there. You were not just created to drive a nice car and pay the bills. Who am I talking to if you're living from one moment to the next just paying bills? God, come on, take me into this. There's got to be something bigger than that in your life. What is, what is the meaning of life if all you're doing is getting up to go to work to pay bills? To go to sleep, to get up, go to work, pay bills. To go to sleep, get up, go to work, pay bills. Is, is that all it is to you? It's got to be more than that. It's got to be more than getting high, coming back down, get high again. Touch your neighbor, it's got to be more than that. It's got to be more. It's got to be more to your life than another kid, another baby shower. How many? How many kids? Touch your neighbor, it's got to be more than that. Fellas, it's got to be more to your life than making kids, having kids. That don't make you a man because you are, I got 12 of them. If you ain't taking care of one of them, that don't make you a man. Because there's just got to be more than that. It's got to be more than what you drive. But there's a purpose, and God gave it to us before we got here to planet Earth. Something happened between when He created us and gave us purpose to this moment now. And I'm submitting to you, stuff has gotten in the way. Some of us work so much we have never addressed our purpose issue. You don't even have time to seek God on your face for what is my purpose. Some of you work so much you don't even have time to address your health issue. But just take a pill and get to the next day. It's got to be more to your life than that. Bow your heads. Close your eyes. For the first presentation of this series, I want to speak to you concerning purpose. God, in Jesus' name, here we are. 30, 40, 50, 20 years old. We've complained so much about this gift called life. It has made us not take the time to appreciate the fact that you breathe in our nostrils. We haven't taken the time to consider that we are not a mistake even with our flaws, we are fearfully and wonderfully made. You said in your word, God, before you formed us, you knew us. At the same time you formed us, you ordained us, consecrated us for a divine purpose. God, in Jesus' name, for those in this room who don't Know their purpose. Reveal it unto them in Jesus' name. Today is the day we start living life to 
its fullness. No regrets, no restrictions, no limitations. In the name of Jesus. As we wait for you to reveal our purpose, help us to preach our pain. Testify about our testimonies. Don't let us be silent. You've been too good to us. Put a word on our lips that allows us to be used while we wait on you to use us. In Jesus' name. Gladheart says, so. Amen. Thank God. Come on, give God praise.